Hello folks, Mistress of the Hair here, after a while of not posting anything, but I'm back, ready for another interesting one for you guys. It's going to be similar to the two I've done that are voice impressions, but different in the fact that this is not going to be an impression of anyone's actual voice. Hopefully, though, I can explain what it is I'm going to be doing in this video without confusing the hell out of you guys. <laughs> A number of years ago, about two or three, I fell in love with the two new Star Trek movies, Star Trek and then Star Trek Into Darkness. Within that sequel, the main villain, as most everyone did, Khan, played by Benedict Cumberbatch. And not only did I jump into a role-playing basis with the character, I built up a female con cosplay, or femcon, and I created what I think would be likely to be a voice for her. It is very, very firmly based off of Benedict's vocal tone, his accent, and in general his voice within the role, even if the voice I'm doing isn't exactly that. I did a number of test runs in a couple of other voices besides that, and nothing really, nothing else really worked out as well. So I ended up picking that for uh, future occasions. And like before, I'm just gonna be doing the lines straight off in the particular voice, starting from the first line and continuing all the way to the very last line within the film. Additionally, I'm also doing lines from the trailer that never made it into the full movie. And this video is going to be unique in that it's going to have a blooper reel. <laughs> because, oh man, number of mistakes I made trying to record this. Phew. And a lot of silly stuff that happened along the way, yeah. So. Without further ado, here we go, and I hope you guys like it. I can save her. Your daughter. I can save her. How many torpedoes? Your torpedoes, the weapons you threatened me with in your message, how many are there? I surrender. Captain? Why aren't we moving, Captain? An unexpected malfunction, perhaps in your warp core conveniently stranding you on the edge of Klingon space? I think you'll find my insight valuable, Captain. Ignore me, and you will get everyone on this ship killed. Oh, Captain. Are you gonna punch me again? Over and over until your arm weakens. Clearly you want to, so tell me. Why did you allow me to live? <laughs> no. I surrendered to you because despite your attempts to convince me otherwise, you seem to have a conscience, Mr. Kirk. If you did not, then it would be impossible for me to convince you of the truth. Two, three. One, seven, four, six, 
one, one. Coordinates not far from Earth. If you want to know why I did what I did, go and take a look. I can give you 72, and they're on board your ship, Captain. They have been all along. I suggest you open one up. There are men and women in all those torpedoes, Captain. I put them there. A remnant of a time long past, genetically engineered to be superior so as to lead others to peace and world at war. But we were condemned as criminals, forced into exile. For centuries we slept, hoping when we awoke things would be different. But as a result of the destruction of Vulcan, your star fleet began to aggressively search distant quadrants of space. My ship was found adrift, I alone was revived. John Harrison was a fiction created the moment I was awoken by your Admiral Marcus to help him advance his cause, a smokescreen to conceal my true identity. My name is Khan. Because I am better everything. Alexander Marcus needed to respond to an uncivilized threat in a civilized time, and for that he needed a warrior's mind, my mind, to design weapons and warships. He wanted to exploit my savagery. Intellect alone is useless in a fight, Mr. Spock. You, you can't even break a rule. How could you be expected to break a bone? Marcus used me to design weapons. I helped him realize his vision of a militarized starfleet. He sent you to use those weapons to fire my torpedoes on an unsuspecting planet. And then he purposely crippled your ship in enemy space, leading to one inevitable outcome. The Klingons would come surging for whomever was responsible, and you would have no chance of escape. Marcus would finally have the war he talked about, the war he always wanted. Marcus took my crew from me! He used my friends to control me. I tried to smuggle them to safety by concealing them in the very weapons I had designed. But I was discovered. I had no choice but to escape alone. And when I did, I had every reason to suspect that Marcus had killed every single one of the people I hold most dear. So I responded in kind. My crew is my family, Kirk. Is there anything you would not do for your family? At warp? No, Kirk. We both know who it is. If you think you're safe at warp, you're wrong. Sorry. Try.
Dreadnought class, two times the size, three times the speed. Advanced weaponry, modified for a minimal crew. Unlike most Federation vessels, it's built solely for combat. In exchange for what? Captain, you can't even ensure the safety of your own crew. There's a cargo door, hangar 7, access port 101A. You need to find the manual override to open that airlock. Sorry. Did you find the manual override? Are you? I see it. My display is still functioning. I see you, Kirk. You're 200 meters ahead at my one o'clock. Cut to your left a few degrees and follow me. They'll know we're here. I know the best way to the bridge. Theirs won't be. The turbo would be easily tracked and Marcus would have us in a cage. This path takes us to the engine room. They know they won't be able to use their weapons here without destabilizing the warp core, which gives us the advantage. This way. You. You. Should have let me sleep. I'm going to make this very simple for you. Your crew for my crew. Oh, you are smart, Mr. Spock. Mr. Spock, give me my crew. Continue the work we were doing before we were banished. Shall I destroy you, Mr. Spock, or will you give me what I want? Fortunately, mine are perfectly functional. Drop your shield. Well, let's play this out logically then, Mr. Spock. Firstly, I will kill your captain to demonstrate my resolve. Then if yours holds, I will have no choice but to kill you and your entire crew. Your crew requires oxygen to survive, mine does not. I will target your life support systems located behind the Alphen cell and after every single person aboard your ship suffocates, I will walk over your cold corpses to recover my people. Now shall we begin? I 
I see all 72 torpedoes are still in their tubes. If they're not mine, Commander, I will know it. Thank you, Mr. Spock. Well, Kirk, it seems apt to return you to your crew. After all, no ship should go down without her captain. No! Set destination for Starfleet headquarters. Confirmed. And there we go with all the lines from the actual movie. And now, on to the additional trailer lines. Woo You'll recognize them, definitely. So, well, most of them. Some of them I'm like, whoa, hoo, 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 hoo. You think your world is safe. It is an illusion. A comforting lie told to protect you. Enjoy these final moments of peace, for I have returned to have my vengeance. Your commanders have committed a crime I cannot forgive. None of you are safe. Have I got your attention now? Mr. Spock. The mind of the Enterprise, the fearless genius who ensures a calm force of intelligence guides their every mission. But look deeper and you will see an outsider who does not belong, a man of two worlds. This tears him apart, the constant battle between what he thinks and what he feels. What does he do? Does he follow his head, embracing logic and the path of reason, or does he follow his heart, knowing the emotions he cannot control may destroy him? I will help him decide. Darkness is coming. There we go. That is actually it. Um, like I said, I'm gonna do a, a blooper reel, but that's gonna be a video aside from this video. So, <laughs> that's officially the end of this one. Again, I hope you guys liked it, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao!